Parihuya was a young girl here when the Awatea canoe turned up. Uh, Awatea, or Great Barrier Island, is named after that canoe. It came into the estuary out here, right? And then Turi and his people were here receiving the hospitality of Titahi, who was the chief of this pa at that time. Uh, and he, uh, his young son, Turangi Mua, who was about seven years old, got very keen on Titahi's young daughter, Parihuya, who was probably about six, seven. And he gave her some of the karaka berries that had been bought, karaka uh, seeds, which had been bought from Rangitahu, which is Sunday Island in the Kermadec group. And he told her to plant those. And they said, when I have, when those trees flower and have fruit, then I'll come back and get you. Now, normally it's about seven years between planting a karaka tree and when it starts flowering. Now, when the, they knew that the, when the uh, karaka trees started flowering, then <coughs> Parihuya got, got her people to build a guest house for guests that were coming. And being who she was, they, they did it. <laughs> and they came back and Turangi Mua, who was a, a young man by this time, asked Titahi for uh, Parihuya's hand in marriage. Titahi did not agree to it because your Puhi maidens, which party who you was, you marry for political purposes. Well, political purposes for marriage with a tribe that's 400 miles, 400 miles away, it's not much, not much cop. It's no use to anybody. So he refused. But however, Turangimua was very determined. And by this time, of course, Titahi was not living here. He was living at Onipu Whakatakataka because the gardens around this area had been worked out. And Onipu Whakatakata, which is known by the Pākehā name of Paratai Drive, Paratai being the, the Māori translation of sea cliff. Uh, <laughs> and a war took place there, or fights took place there. In the story it says that Titahi was killed. I don't think he was. Uh, but he, certainly his people were defeated and Turangi Mua took Parihuya and started moving overland back down to Hawke's Bay. They went down the east coast and then they went up into the um, Rimutakas and the Ruahini range. And in the Rimutakas, in actual fact, in the top, top pass of the Rimutakas, uh, the local people objected to them going through they attacked and they killed Turangi Mua. And a post was put up to mark where he uh, fell, and it was still there quite a few years back, as far as I know, and uh, as I was told. Okay, uh, George Graham was told, and I was told it was still there as well. It's not there anymore, I've been had a look. Uh, so Parihuya carried on to Patia, where Turi's people had finally settled. She was pregnant when Turangi Mua was killed, and she had the baby in Patia. She raised the baby in Patia, and then when her daughter Ruahini, named after the mountains, was old enough, she left her there and came back here to Tamaki. Now the reason why she's coming back here was that Turangi Mua had attacked her father, Titahi, and that is a wrong. She was coming back to Air, which is to make things right. So she came back and did the ceremonies to make things right, to, uh, to right that wrong that had been done by her husband and by her as well. So that was done. Then when she died, or just before she died, she predicted that out here in the swamps there, they would see a kotuku rerangatahi, a white heron of a single flight. And when they saw that, they would know that Ruahini was coming here. They saw that, they saw a kotuku out here. And so they built a house, 
for Ruahini to come back. Ruahini came back and the first thing she did was go into these trees where her mother had been buried, hung up in northern style in the, in the trees that she had planted. And there she sang her song, which is the tauriri, the tangi. And lele means to be heard, the song that is heard, which is the real meaning of this place. And that name obliterated any older name that the place ever had. We've got no clue as to what it was called before then. But that name has become very famous because not only is it famous here, it's famous in all the tribes who are descended from Parihuya and Ruahini. So these Karaka trees here are those growing from the seeds planted by Parihuya. How long ago? 26, 26 generations before 1900, which means round about 1300 or round about that period, if you want to put it in Pākehā terms. But, and it could be longer, it could be shorter, but <laughs> that's, that's taking it on an average. And so these trees don't live all that long in the sense that they live for something like 250 to 700 years. So these trees haven't been here since Turangi Moor, but these are the descendants which are still going. Poor remnants, but they are the descendants. That's a living link with the past. <laughs>